Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to be building some links for the Green Cherokee. In the last couple of videos of the Cherokee Resurrection series, we built a truss for the Dana 60 down here. We built upper and lower control arm mounts. We welded the axle tubes to the Dana 60. We built lower coilover mounts, as well as last video, we built the coilover towers. And like I said earlier, today we're gonna be building the links to tie this all together now. Because right now we're using a PVC for our upper link and we're using the old links that are actually way too short for the lowers. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. So over here, I'll show you all what we're working with. So we got three three foot pieces of two inch quarter wall DOM. This is gonna be the upper and the lower links. And then these two pieces right here are one and a half quarter wall. This is gonna be our steering, but we're gonna be doing that next video. Originally, I wanted to do the steering this week, but I ordered all, like all the Heims and whatnot a little too late and they didn't come in on time. Also for the links, we're gonna be using Johnny joints. I think you guys already saw that in one of the last videos. The lowers already originally had Johnny joints in them. These, so these two are ones I bought for the upper. I'm going Johnny joints. I actually, I prefer Enduro joints over Johnny joints, but since the lowers already had uh, Johnny joints in them, I'm, I'm gonna make everything same for same and we're going Johnny joints. Enduro joints are from Barnes and they just seem a little beefier to me than these ones. From my experience, these Johnny joints actually have a smaller profile as well. And our upper link is so close to the floor up there, especially where the Johnny joint's gonna be, it's probably best that we have a smaller profile joint up there. So anyways, these are inch and a quarter Johnny joints with a 916 bolt hole. So we got two brand new ones of those. We've got four on the Jeep already. I've also got the tube inserts here. These are from Barnes. I like these smooth ones, just the complete circle ones without the hex. I think they weld up a little nicer and they look a lot better. The other option that I could have gone was, uh, these are actually from the, the green Jeep, the old lowers. You can see we got the hex on them. I just think they don't look all that great. So we went with these ones. It might be a little tougher to adjust, but I think we'll manage. For the jam nuts, we're gonna be using the old ones that were already on the suspension. We'll just be cleaning them up a little bit. Now, before we make some new links, we're gonna be building a new upper link mount at the frame side. I talked about it in a previous video, but we're gonna look at it now and we're gonna get it replaced. This is the driver's side bracket on the frame that we built about three years ago. It's for the long arm setup. This is the three piece cross member. The center section comes down. Actually, here it is right here. I know I showed you guys that in a previous video but basically this section comes down so we can service the transmission and transfer case without disassembling the suspension and like I said we built this quite a while ago and I really like I really like the setup I really like the design of it but I never liked this mount in particular it's obviously strong enough because it hasn't gone anywhere in three years but we're gonna be redoing this you can see it's made out of one piece of metal and I remember back when I built this that this was actually the second one I made it's very tough to bend a piece of metal and keep, have the mounting width be correct in the end. Even this one wasn't quite correct. You can see, uh, you can't really see it on camera, but down below, it's a little wider than it is up top just, just because of that fact. It is stronger when it's all one piece, but nowadays I make brackets you know, similar to this out of three pieces. Here's a good comparison. This is the one of the link mounts that we made that we're not gonna use. This is for the axle side for the upper link but we actually made a new one in one of the previous videos. But this is a three piece bracket and this is usually what I find myself doing nowadays. Doing it this way rather than this way, you can get the mounting width dead on and it's a lot easier that way. So we're gonna go ahead, oh honestly, <laughs> I wonder if we can use this one right here. Let me take some measurements, that would be awesome. I don't, I don't think so. This hole looks to be up a little higher than this one, but yeah, I'll take some measurements and we'll see. That'd be really cool if we don't have to cut a new one out. I bet you, I bet you it's the same, knowing how I take my measurements. So that is, what is that? Roughly like one and five eighths. Wow, it's so close. This one's one and three quarter. So that's, this one's too high, so we're gonna have to go make a new one. That's crazy. It was so close. Yeah, let's go make a new one. Same height as this. We can make it a little prettier too. This one's not all that pretty. Actually, I think it's more of inch and a half. I don't know, we cut this bracket. We didn't have the CNC three, three years ago. So we cut everything on hand by hand with a uh, bandsaw. My dad did it for me. So nowadays we can make stuff a lot prettier. 
The first step to this whole process is cutting off the old mount on our crossmember bracket. I used a cutoff wheel, a sawzall, and finally a handheld bandsaw. All these ways took quite a long time, and after I finished cutting this off and I was done, I realized I own a plasma cutter. I could have removed the plasma cutter torch from the CNC to get this job done, but, but I just didn't think of it at the time. Anyways, I designed the new bracket we we're gonna put here a little longer than the old one. It's gonna push the mount location for the link forward a few inches, which in turn is going to shorten our upper link. This will allow our caster to stay as close to seven degrees throughout the suspension's travel. Our front driveline U-joints may not like this, but it's a sacrifice we're gonna have to make. So here's the new mount. I'm gonna get it tacked onto the bracket up there. I'm not super happy with this. It, it came out good, it's nice and strong, it looks good, but I would have liked it to be more like the upper link mount on the axle side, but this will do just fine. This is gonna fix the problem of the mounting width not being all that great. So I'm happy there. I'm gonna get it tacked on, we're gonna leave it tacked on for now, and we can finally jump over to building some links. <laughs> Now moving on to the links and the Johnny joints. We gotta figure out how to adjust these Johnny joints to set all this up. So first, we're gonna take the brand new Johnny joint. I've got one of the old uh, jam nuts off of one of the old Johnny joints. Now let's get that on there. This, this is a right hand thread one. So these Johnny joints have a three inch shank. I think that's usually the case, like the standard is three inches long. I know you can get longer shanks, but this is, this is like the standard one to go with. So after the jam nut, we're gonna go ahead and get our tube insert. I'm gonna thread that onto there. Now we gotta set this tube insert and this jam nut to the middle of the travel. Now generally, I want three quarters of an inch of movement or adjustment into each direction. So we're gonna set this jam nut to three quarters of an inch. And bring it down a little bit. Three quarters of an inch, we'll thread on the tube insert that much that way. And that should be the middle of our travel, which means we have three quarters of an inch of adjustment up towards the Johnny joint, up towards the head of the Johnny joint. Then we can bring this all down. When say we go to adjust it, we'll bring this down another three quarters of an inch. So right now the end of this jam nut to the end of the threads over here is one and a half inches, which means we have three quarters of an inch of adjustment into this direction as well. So you can see inside of here now, we don't have complete thread engagement into that tube insert anymore. That's okay though. From what I understand, the rule of thumb is to have the Johnny joint threaded into at least 75% of the length of the tube insert. So right now, so this tube insert is inch and a half long, like we said, it's in there. It's only threaded in about an inch and a quarter. So I believe, I don't know what that equals up to, but that's over 75%. I believe that's somewhere around 80%. So we're good there. So we should be adjusted way up further than that though. So we're gonna bring this back up. So we're gonna set both Johnny joints at the end of each link to this right here. Now this is a great starting point. From here, we need to find the length of the DOM. We're gonna do that by getting these Johnny joints installed into their positions on the Jeep and finding the length from the, the end of the shank here on the tube insert to the opposite one. And that'll give us the length of the DOM. Now that's pretty straightforward. I should also note that I have a left-hand Johnny joint and a right-hand Johnny joint on each link. That's just so we can loosen up these jam nuts on each link, grab hold of the DOM, twist it, and that'll be our adjustment. Pretty straightforward and pretty easy. So enough talking, let's get to work. Now I actually screwed up. I should have ordered one more jam nut because that upper control arm, where is it? Right here, coming off of the Dana 30, it had the bushing up at the Dana 30 on top of the diff. So we didn't need a Johnny joint or a jam nut. I had a bush in there. So I should have ordered a jam nut. So that's too bad. I'll have to order one down the road before this thing starts driving. All right, we've got all the Johnny joints in their positions. We're gonna be doing the lowers first. So we got four, we got two lowers on the axle, two lowers over here on the unibody, on the cross member. Now what I would normally do for this, I'd have some PVC. Now I do have some here, but this isn't the right inside diameter. This is the right inside diameter if we wanted to put the Johnny joint straight into it, but not the right diameter for the tube insert. What I would normally do is cut the PVC to length to make sure everything's right, but we're just gonna go for it. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna measure, I'm gonna go get Ash and she's gonna help me out with this. We're gonna measure with a tape measure from this lip to the other lip on that Johnny joint, and that's gonna be our DOM length. We're gonna do that for the two lowers, and then we're gonna work on the upper. So I actually just remembered that we had had some right PVC. This is from when we built Jake's Wrangler. This was sitting behind the shop. So now we can make up some mock-up links and make sure that we measure right.
So 29 three quarter, that's how long the piece of DOM has to be. We just cut this to 29 three quarter, worked just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and try this on the other side because they should, in theory, be the same exact length. Then we'll go ahead and cut out the DOM. Now we got both lowers cut out. We went with 29 and 7 eighths. I'm starting with this one. I cleaned up the both ends of it. And now we're gonna go ahead and install our tube inserts. These should slide right in. Probably not right in. They'll probably need a little persuasion. Oh, pretty easy. I'm doing all left hand thread down at the axle and all right hand up at the frame. That's always what I do. There's no reason behind it. That's just what I do. Here's the right hand tube insert. Right in. <laughs> Cool, so we're gonna get these tacked in. We're not gonna be fully welding them today because like I said, I'm not gonna be fully welding anything until everything's ready to be fully welded. So I just remembered after I put that first tack in, we're gonna have to cut that off. How I do, I haven't built links in a little bit, a couple months, but how I usually do it is I'll drill a hole straight through just so we'll have two holes inside of this DOM. That way we can weld around the entire perimeter for this tube insert and we can plug weld in two spots. Some people don't like doing that. I like doing it. It's just some extra security. So down the road in the future, once we go to finish weld all this, we'll be able to plug weld these as well. So we've got both the lowers drilled right now. I got one right there. I've got the tube inserts back into them. How I went ahead and drilled those, I drilled them out to half inch. We've got one hole drilled on each side. This one right here you can see is going like towards me and towards you. And then down here, this one's going 90 degrees of that upper one. So yeah, pretty simple. That'll just give us more bite to that tube insert. So we're gonna go ahead and get those tacked on. Not fully welded, just tacked on for now. Now before we go put those in, we're gonna have to measure for this upper link and we're gonna have to get this upper link sorted out first because we're gonna have to move this Jeep up a little so we can move this jack stand out of the way. We're gonna have to reposition that jack stand because it's right in the way of where this lower link has to go. So that's all right, we're just gonna reposition those once we take our measurements for the upper link. Now here's the two lowers and the upper. <laughs> it's quite a bit smaller now. That's awesome. Let's go grab Ash and we'll get these links installed to the Jeep. to the end of the video. This was a pretty long day. I had three days to make this video and for some reason I packed it all into one day. But I'm glad we were able to get done what I wanted to. I imagine this video is probably a quick one. We honestly didn't do all that much, but next week's video is gonna be very interesting. I'm pretty excited about it. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. We're having a lot of fun making this series for y'all and we're gonna be putting out a video every single Wednesday until this Jeep is done and it hits the trail. We got a long ways to go, but hopefully we can get this thing going by summer. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. I'll see you on the trail, and I'll see you next time.